Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So recently our community manager Ren came across a Reddit post that really resonated with me. It was about this engineer who is trying to help and support his employee pass her at the exam. Now he believes in her and he wants her to get the promotion but she needs to pass her FE exam. And when I read this post, it really made me happy. And it also reminded me of my own past experience. So in this video, I'm going to share with you guys a little background about my previous job and the tasks I handled, how I almost got fired, what I learned from that experience, my thoughts on the Reddit post and addressing the negative comments. A few years ago, I was working at a construction company in LA as a project engineer, and my tasks included takeoffs, project estimations, preparing contract documents for bidding, and managing multiple construction sites. So I would visit sites and make sure that the projects were on schedule and within budget, and then order materials, and then also allocate mostly resources. Now. Part of my job was reviewing the plans and make sure that the projects were being built according to the specs and then also check if there were any discrepancies between the architectural and the structural drawings, which by the way was quite common. Now, the foreman will always double check my work because I was a recent graduate and although I did have experience in construction, but it wasn't in the US. And so I constantly had to communicate with the foreman and the project engineer to make sure everything was on track and the projects were on schedule. So one day I visited one of the construction sites to check the progress. And as I was reviewing the plans, I noticed that the foundation layout was incorrect. So the way they laid out the foundation compared to the plans, it was actually flipped for some of the houses. And I immediately pointed out this to the foreman and he actually dismissed me. And I remember he said, you're a recent graduate, you have no experience and that he was sure of what he was doing. And honestly, I trusted him at the time and I didn't really question it further. I was like, maybe I'm missing something here. And I went back to the office and I resumed my work. And that was my biggest mistake. And I'll tell you guys why in a little bit. Now, they proceeded to dig the foundation. Two weeks later, the project manager visited the site and guess what happened guys? Yep, the foundation was flipped for some of the houses. And I remember I got a call from the owner or from my boss around 7 p.m. And he was furious. He was really angry. And here's another mistake. I should have not answered work calls that late. Now, after that incident, a lot of people were discussing that I should get fired. And at the moment, I had no idea these conversations were happening. Now, why did not get fired? Well, the project manager told the boss that if I get fired, he's going to resign. And this really got me thinking, like, why did he fight for me? And so basically, I think he saw how hardworking I was. I used to work long hours. I was curious. I always wanted to learn and improve. And I respected him. He was knowledgeable. And I, I made it a point to learn from him. And if he asked me to do something, I would do it without hesitation. I never treated a task beneath me. And he recognized my work ethic. And I think that's why he stood up for me when it mattered the most. Now, here are seven lessons that I learned from that experience. Lesson number one, document everything. Always report issues in writing and send them to everyone involved. And here's the thing, guys. If you're wrong, someone will correct you and life moves on. But if you write and you didn't say anything or document it, it can cause you way bigger problems down the line. Lesson number two, speak up. If you see something wrong, say something. Don't let anyone intimidate you. Lesson three, mistakes are part of learning. It's okay to make mistakes as long as you learn from them. Number four, find supportive people. Identify those who can help you and guide you. And if you have a good mentor at work, don't take them for granted. Appreciate them and learn from them and ask them how you can make their life easier. It goes both ways, guys. Number five, for supervisors, mentor young engineers. If you're in a leadership position, help young engineers grow and develop their skills. They are the future of this industry. Number six, give back. 
when you reach a senior position or you earn your PE license, don't forget to give back and support the next generation. We need to break this cycle of make, making things unnecessarily difficult for the new engineers. And lastly, number seven, know your worth and know your rights. When I started my company, I hired a, a lawyer and I actually learned about employment law. And looking back, I realized that some companies that I worked for were doing things that were borderline illegal. But that's a video for another day. Going back to the Reddit posts, it's amazing to see more engineers like that, people who believe in their team and mentor them. If you have someone at work who believes in you, make sure to thank them and make sure to appreciate them and learn from them. In my experience, that's not as common in the engineering world, but I see it changing and that makes me really happy. Now, if you know a friend or co-worker that needs to pass the FE exam to get that promotion, don't forget to send them our way. Our courses and our channel can really help them pass the FE exam, feel confident and excel in their engineering career. Now, one thing that bothered me from that Reddit post were some of the negative comments questioning the employee's competence just because she failed the FE exam and not knowing anything about this employee. That was a little bit disappointing. The truth is passing the FE exam and excelling at work are two completely different things. Struggling with the FE does not mean someone is not smart or capable. And some people are just bad at taking tests or they just suffer from test anxiety or have a busy schedule and they don't have time to prepare for the FE. So if you're someone who is trying to pass the FE exam and you see these comments, don't let them get to you. Believe in yourself, focus on your goals, and create a plan that will help you pass your FE exam. You can do this. We have over 80 interviews in our channel with students from all different backgrounds who pass the FE exam. And if they did it, so can you. Now, I'm also going to link some YouTube videos in the description below that's gonna help you guys create a plan and pass your FE exam. So the first video I recommend that you guys check out is the number one key to passing the FE exam in 2025. Now, if you feel like you're really busy and you don't have a lot of time to study, make sure to check out the second video where I share my study methods and how you can use them to pass your FE and your PE exams in 2025. And then lastly, we have the playlist, which is FE exam preparation. In this playlist, there are five videos. I recommend that you guys go through all of them. And basically in these videos, I lay out everything that you guys need to pass your FE exam. We talk about the specifications, the reference handbook, the calculator, the four month study plan, the study resources, how to stay consistent and how to effectively study so that you can retain all the information for your FE exam. And make sure that you also grab our books. So we have FE Civil, FE Mechanical, and we're gonna launch the FE Other Discipline soon. And in these books, we have over 100 FE problems, and every problem, there is a YouTube link where you can check the step-by-step -step solution. So that's it guys for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel. And then please share our video with your friends and engineer colleagues. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys have a great productive week and I will see you guys on the next video. A la prochaine. Oh yeah,